Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I just want to start by thanking the Mayor for taking an interest in this key site in my ward. I want to thank the Chief Planner uh, for taking uh, an interest and uh, our General Mayor Mike Williams at Dev and my local councillors Peter Milchin and Sarah Doucette. We all kind of interact at that one point there. This is a very important site in uh, the City of Toronto, just not only in our communities, but in, in the City of Toronto. Yesterday we went on the offense. Uh, we went on the offense a couple weeks ago. We met with uh, the Mayor and with the representatives, but yesterday we moved a, a motion through Council uh, asking for a transportation study for that area, what could be accommodated there. I've also wrote a letter, which you have before you, to the Minister Broughton to take an interest in this site. And uh, we also sent a letter to Mondelez, as the mayor said, to sit down and we want to work with them. And our last line stated, said, I truly hope that we can set this positive tone and move ahead in the spirit of cooperation and mutual respect. So I want to start with that. And again, I've only got five minutes, so I'm going to kind of fly through this. This 27-acre site is located at northwest corner of Lakeshore Boulevard West and Park Lawn Road, just south of the Metrolinx rail lines and the Gardner Expressway. The total area of the site, 27 acres, including a 60, 625,000-square-foot manufacturing facility. It's been there since 1948. The commercial bakery, it's been used as Christie's, Nabisco, Kraft, and just from, uh, uh, recently Mondelez. For 64 years, the site has been home to a major employer in Toronto community and my community. When operating at full strength, it employed, it employed approximately 1,100 people. Today, it's around 550 jobs that are uh, going to be lost. The air zone for light industrial. Immediately to the north, the food turtle, we've heard from our general manager how important, we've heard from the local council, Peter Milton, how important that is. Here's a picture of the site here, and I want to explain how we got here to where we are today. This is the motel strip, the old motel strip. As we talked back in the late 80s, the province, the city of Etobicoke, a former metro, and the federal government took an interest in the site. And how do we revitalize that old motel strip? So what happened was uh, provincial was put on it, all the levels got together, and we expropriated in behind all the motel owners, got this great public realm, it's approximately 20 acres of parkland, new road, public access. Densities were then transferred onto the motel strip here as a payback to motel owners. That's how we see all these new condos that are going up today. Back in 05, at Parkland Lakeshore, running up to the QEW, we lost this at the board. But this has all been planned now, and what we have done is worked with craft, worked with planning, and we've created a commercial buffer along Park Lawn and along Lakeshore to Brookers Lane to protect a commercial buffer zone. We've worked with craft all the way around them. Uh, and in this area here, these four buildings I'll show you in the next slide are already built, these two, these four here, and we'll go to where we are now. Here's the four buildings that are already built. This is the QE, uh, the, the Nexus off the Garden Expressway, Brookers Lane. This building, these four, as I mentioned, are built. This one is built now. This one is going up. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think there's twelve buildings in the planning department right now. They're going to be in 40 story range and higher. These two here are in 40 and 66 stories. So there's a tremendous amount of growth happening around the plant. And what we can accommodate there, I don't know. Um, I do want to say that uh, we have to protect these large pieces of property. They're very important. I do kind of question Mondelez as a, a great company. I own a company myself, but Kraft has been there for years. They just recently split the companies in the late recent months, and I believe this to be a business decision. They look at this property, they split from Kraft, Mondelez starts a new company. This rezone, this 27 acre piece of property rezoned, is probably going to be worth upwards of $200 million that was rezoned to residential. If we keep it the way it is now, it's probably 70 to $20 million. So I think this is a business decision that's happening um, here. And, but I do want to stress that we do want to work with uh, economic development, work with our planning department, work with the mayor, and work with Mondelez to come up with uh, something here. But this piece has to be protected. It's a very important piece for the community and for jobs. And again, uh, you heard from Councillor Milchin and from our general manager, uh, that food terminal has been attacked. That's a huge piece of infrastructure in our city, just not in our community, and uh, it, it's important that we protect both of those together. And I hope the province is going to come to the, the table for us because we don't want this to go to the OMB. Um, the other thing I was going to mention was, um, was the other thing I, was, I lost my train of thought there, but it, it's, uh, it's very important that we, we protect this and. Uh, ask you to support us, uh, asking the province for the support for keeping this employment. And uh, close the door. We have to shut the front door 
and uh, work with this company, come up with the best. Uh, that and I'll just close, shut the front door. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grimes. Councillor Milton to speak. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I, I, I want to uh, thank Mayor Ford uh, for taking a great leadership position on this issue. Uh, when this was announced, Mayor Ford immediately wanted to meet with executives of this company, understand what's happening, iterate to them the city's position that we will help them make sure this site continues to offer employment, and that we will help them as a company continue to be successful in the city of Toronto, retain production, retain jobs and facilities in the city. So Mayor Ford, uh, I thank you for, for that on behalf of, of certainly our community and the families uh, in Councillor Grimes and my community that depend on this. But the issue that we have before us today is not just about the Mondelez Christie site. Yes, we do not want a conversion of that property to residential. But immediately to the north, across the ward boundary in, in Ward 5, we have the Ontario Food Terminal. And the history of the Ontario Food Terminal was the provincial government moved all the produce wholesalers away from the St. Lawrence Market area in the 1950s to a new site in Etobicoke, on the Gardner, on the rail lands, to build the largest wholesale produce facility in Canada and one of the largest in North America. And that facility has served us very well. It serves Toronto, it serves the GTA, and you might be surprised if you're eating a salad in Nova Scotia, it might very well have come through the Ontario Food Terminal. This is local, provincial, national infrastructure. And you have a letter today from before you from the chair of the board of the Ontario Food Terminal, which is a provincial agency, supporting the mayor's call on the province to declare uh, this an area of provincially significant employment lands, which could one day lead to the province declaring a more formal provincial interest in this as well. This is not just about the preventing additional condos being built on the Christie site. It's not about that, although that is important. It's about protecting the food term, protecting a key piece of infrastructure that supports thousands upon thousands of jobs within the city of Toronto in all the other food sector, which ensures that the shops and the restaurants and the hotels in our city have easy and affordable access to good fresh food. We've had many debates in this chamber about food access. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is no more important point of entry for good food access in the city than the Ontario Food Terminal. And just as Christie's or Kraft or Mondelez, however you want to call them, for years warned us, warned the Ontario Municipal Board, do not place too much intensification around us because it'll push us out. That day has come. And now you have the Ontario Food Terminal telling you the same thing. Do not do anything that destabilizes us. Do not put unnecessary pressure on us. Do not create conditions that impede the flow of traffic into our site. Do not create conditions where potentially there will be complaints about truck traffic late at night or refrigerator units on all night or the person who simply doesn't like the look of cabbages or salads out their window. So this is what this fight is about. It's about protecting a key piece of our local, provincial, and national infrastructure, not destabilizing. At the same time, Mondelez are a property owner. They want to maximize the value of their property, so they've submitted a request for, for conversion of their lands. That's their right. That's fine. We have to take a strong position on employment lands in the city, and especially in this area. We're not going to support this kind of a its impact is too great. Its potential to destabilize the ability to create employment opportunities in the city is too great. Its potential to undermine tremendous existing other businesses is too great. We will work with you, Mondelez, to assist you to repurpose buildings, bring in new opportunities. We'll work with you. 
I'm sure we'll be flexible with them in terms of the things they might need to make that site work for themselves or somebody else. But we have to draw a line in the sand here. And we have to protect the Ontario food tree. It's in all of our interests. It's a provincial interest. And I ask you to support the recommendations from here. Thank you, Councillor Milton. Councillor Doucette. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Speaker. We need to protect unemployment lands. We need to keep them for Torontonians to be able to work and find jobs in our city. And even better, find jobs near to their homes. Before I became a city councillor, I had a five minute walk to work. It was wonderful, actually. Uh, but it meant that I wasn't part of gridlock. I wasn't putting into the wear and tear of our infrastructure. I support the local councillor in his efforts to keep this employment land and do not allow it to become more condominiums. As we've already heard, this property is just south of the Ontario Food Terminal. What would happen if we had condominiums on this property? I understand that then the Food Terminal may have to change some of the ways they do things. Would they stay around? Would they stay to provide us with our fresh fruit and vegetable? Would they also sell up and we get more condominiums? So as I say, we need to protect our employment lands. And most important, we've got to allow people to have employment near where they live. I have condominiums being built or wanting to be built just across the other side of a river. In this area, we have plenty of places for people to live, but we don't have places for people to work. So I support the local councillor. I thank the mayor for getting involved with this one. And let's work together here to keep these lands as they should be. Thank you, Councillor Deceptor. Councillor Mamalini to speak.